this problem, we want to consider the two figures which are given. In figure A, two identical rectangular rods of metal are welded together end to end. T1 uh, is 0 degrees Celsius on the left hand side and T2 is 100 degrees Celsius on the right hand side. With this temperature difference, it takes two minutes for 10 joules to be conducted at a constant rate uh, from the right hand side to the left hand side. We're asked how much time it would take if we were to reconfigure the rods uh, such that they were connected as in figure B and uh, we want to conduct the same amount of uh, energy, uh, 10 joules, from the right hand side to the left hand side. So ultimately this is a problem with regards to thermal conduction uh, in composite systems. Uh, in one system, in system A, uh, two slabs are connected in series and in system B they're connected in parallel. You have to be able to recognise that. Okay, so let's write down uh, some equations to recall uh, what we know about uh, thermal conductivity. The heat, uh, which uh, flows from thermal conduction when systems are in physical contact, is given uh, proportionally by the temperature gradient, okay, delta T divided by delta X. Uh, it's also proportional to the thermal conductivity of the material. The, the larger the thermal conductivity, the better the material is at conducting heat. It's also proportional to the cross-sectional area. Okay, so if I was to draw the cross-sectional area on one of these diagrams here, that area there is the cross-sectional area. The larger the area, uh, the more heat that can flow uh, from the right uh, to the left. Uh, and there's also a minus sign here to give you some indication of the direction. Uh, with the T2 is 100 degrees Celsius and T1 is 0 degrees Celsius. If I take X going to the right, then my temperature gradient is positive to the right. Uh, my heat flow, therefore, must be negative. It opposes the temperature gradient. So this is one expression which tells us about uh, the heat flow. Uh, what information are we given uh, in this system here? Well, we're not told exactly what the thermal conductivity of the material is. We don't know a numerical value for K. We don't know a numerical value for A either. And we don't even know how long these rods are. Okay, so what that del delta X is. All we're told is the temperature difference. Uh, so in fact, because these rods don't change, don't physically change, we don't, ch uh, in, in considering between A and B, all we're going to do is place the rods together in a different uh, configuration. Uh, we can also rewrite this expression another way which is uh, useful uh, and that is we can say that the temperature uh, difference uh, across the rods is given by the heat flow uh, multiplied by uh, a material specific quantity which is the uh, thermal resistance. Okay, What is the thermal resistance here? Uh, so you might recall uh, the thermal resistance is just when I take these three quantities K, A and delta X and lump them together. Uh, so, in fact, the thermal resistance of material depends upon the length of the material, it's inversely proportional to the area, and inversely proportional to the thermal conductivity. Uh, so, in fact, in this case here, we can consider each one of these uh, rectangular rods as having a specific uh, thermal resistance R1 and R2, yeah, R1 and R2. They're the individual thermal resistances of those uh, individual rods, and all we're going to do now is connect them together, uh, either in, like I've said, series or in parallel. And we want to think about the total thermal resistance. Uh, so in fact, we can use this equation here, uh, where we can replace RT with the total resistance of the composite system. So what we have to uh, know is the difference between adding in series and adding in parallel. Uh, and uh, there's a very nice uh, analogy uh, between electrical systems here, where the potential difference across my electrical system is like uh, a ch a, a, uh, is what drives the, the current through my system. Uh, so if you remember Ohm's law V equals IR, a nice analogy here uh, where the heat flow is like my current flow and my thermal resistance is like my electrical resistance. From that analogy, uh, we can say that uh, for a, a series system where the heat flows through both R1 and R2, well then the total uh, resistance is just going to be the series sum, so R1 plus R2. And hopefully that's fairly evident from my diagram here. So the same amount of heat must flow through R2 as flows through R1. In parallel, the reciprocal of the total resistance is given by the sum of the reciprocal, so 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Uh, so in fact, in this particular case here, heat flows both through R1 and it flows through R2 in parallel. Uh, if uh, these R1s and R2s are different quantities, let's say, 
for argument's sake that the resistance R1 is much larger than that of R2, okay, so it's a very poor conductor of heat, then not a lot of heat is going to flow through R1, and most of it's going to flow through R2. Let's have a look at uh, equation 2 for the situation when we're in series. So the temperature difference is 100 degrees Celsius, the heat flow is uh, 10 joules in 2 minutes, so 10 joules in 120 seconds, or 1 12th of a joule per second. Uh, is my heat flow, uh, and then multiplied by the total resistance of this composite system here in series, that just adds as R1 plus R2. If I rearrange that equation here, I can find out that R1 plus R2 is equal to uh, 120 across and then divide by 10 uh, is uh, 1200. So I've got a numerical value for R1 plus R2. I can once again use equation 2, but now look at the situation where my system is in parallel. Uh, once again, I have a change in temperature of 100 degrees. That's across the system here. It's 100 degrees on this side and 0 degrees on this side. Um, the heat flow, I don't know. I know I'm going to look at 10 joules, but I don't know the time. So I'm going to leave the heat flow just as it is. Uh, and then I wanted to write in what the total uh, resistance is. So what I need to do is rearrange this equation here. Uh, to get RT as the subject. So what I might leave you to do that, um, it's fairly straightforward. Uh, you can make the denominators the same and then add the numerators. And from that you'll find that the total resistance is R1 multiplied by R2 divided by R1 plus R2. So I can write that in here. R1, R2 divided by R1 plus R2. And so if I look at this equation here, do I know what R1 plus R2 is? Yes, I do. I know that here. Do I know what R1 times R2 is? Well, I don't know that directly. However, there's an important piece of information which is buried inside this uh, description here, and that is the two identical rectangular rods. So even though in this diagram here, those rods have been given different colours to try and help visualise the fact that they've been uh, placed together uh, differently, uh, they're actually exactly the same rod. That means they have the same length, Okay, uh, delta x, they have the same cross-sectional area, and they're the same materials, so the same thermal conductivity. Uh, and so if those uh, things are the same, that means they have the same resi uh, thermal resistance. So in fact, even though R1 plus R2 is 1200, uh, we also know, because it's identical, that R1 is equal to R2, and that must be equal to 600. Uh, so now that I've got that, I know everything uh, there is about the thermal resistance of my composite system when it's parallel. I can write down that 100 is equal to H multiplied by 600 times 600 is uh, 360,000 and uh, 600 plus 600 is 1200 so a few cancellations here 12 into 36 goes 3 and that becomes 300 on the uh, numerator here therefore my heat flow uh, in a composite system when they're uh, parallel is going to be 100 divided by uh, 300, which is equal to one third uh, of a joule per second. Now, um, I want to find out how much time it takes, so remembering how much time it takes uh, in order to pass 10 joules, therefore the time it takes is going to be uh, 10 joules divided by the rate, okay, which is one third of a joule per second. The joules cancel and one of the per seconds is seconds, so 10 divided by a third is 30 seconds. Now previously it took two minutes, okay, so this is four times uh, faster. So we have four times faster uh, heat flow in the composite system when it's parallel, so R parallel um, it must be uh, one quarter uh, of uh, R series. So if it's four times uh, faster uh, heat flow here, uh, then the thermal resistance must be four times smaller. Um, does that make sense? Well, if I just compare these uh, two figures, well, certainly I have doubled my area here. So if I look at this expression here, uh, I've multiplied my area by 2 on the denominator, um, and I've also halved my length. Okay, so the total length of this system here uh, is now half, so I've got a half for delta x. So that's going to be uh, one quarter of the thermal resistance, which makes sense. So we've got a bit of a check there as well.